and we're live. Hello everyone and welcome to the Time Team Cornwall Dig Big Dome Review with me Lawrence Shaw and that guy Derek Pittman and thank you so much everybody for joining us across the globe and we uh, there's so many different places on the list on the chat it's an absolute pleasure to have you all with us and um what did you think we've had three oh. half hour three half hour episodes of time team the, the first episodes of time team in a decade and um and we can't wait to, to chat to everyone to get all your thoughts your questions and and just chat to you over the next hour or so and we've got some real treats in store for you tonight um we've got a long list of guests we're going to talk to carenza john stewart and helen about what it's like to be resurrecting time team after after 10 years of absence uh tim and emily to talk a little bit about the production of the program matt williams and what do you think should we bring some people in <laughs> hi stuart hey stuart hello, hello matt hi there he is. Um, I think I'm with you. Oh, fantastic. Uh, I, I'm in a pub in Yorkshire. Amazing stripes there. Is that double stripes I see? Is there stripes behind you as well? I don't know how much you can see. Yeah, because my... Um... I'm a bit hot, so I've got this jumper on, which <laughs> was knitted by my partner's mum's friend. Like, we've been together a year. And they're like, oh, you're an archaeologist. You need a McCaston jumper. Well, I don't know if I can. Oh. It's just, <laughs> it's just that ridiculous. That is phenomenal. So, yeah, I'm sat here uh, sweating in this. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what's that behind you? your head, John? That, that is Mick Caston. Oh. oh He's come well. with me. Oh. No, it's when Mick broke his ankle and I pushed him around sight in a wheelbarrow. Some oh. kind viewer knitted models, oh. <laughs> and there I am. And there's Mick with his broken ankle. Okay. I thought that was more exciting to look at than me. Emily, thank you for joining us. Congratulations on three fantastic episodes um, over the last three days. How are you feeling about it all? Well, um, I'm quite exhausted actually. It's quite. It's, it's such a different thing. Um, directing in this kind of way um you know with with this amazing group of people that have invested the, their uh, their their money and their time and their enthusiasm and all the patreon people um and you feel this terrible sense of, <laughs> of responsibility um so on the one hand it was just fantastic to be you know back i did it for about eight years i think eight nine years every single time team has been a joy and exciting and interesting and the team is how you see them so um yes it's been brilliant but it's also been very different and uh, and nerve-wracking waiting for, for people's reactions it was just so good to be back again working with everybody and and doing doing what we all enjoy which is being outside having a great mm. challenge i i i really like the fact that they were a little bit longer because it felt, felt more unhurried and and that was essential for the den because it was so complicated i mean there was a point where gus said something like uh, we're still trying to make a coherent story out of what's an extremely complicated set of results and i thought gosh yes uh, emily how have how have you done that um but you know it's, it's a tribute to emily's talent as a director but also to, the, to get getting just that little bit more time it's one of the things i don't know if you found it coming on, on new to the program but because you're doing what you're there to do. In my case, I'm wandering around fields, I'm, I'm looking at maps. Sometimes you haven't even got a clue what's going on in the trenches. And sometimes you haven't got a clue what somebody's just found. And you, you come away after the programme thinking, well, I, I enjoyed that, but I haven't a clue what went on. It was uh, a mixture, really, uh, of emotions and also memories as well. It was two very distinct sides. Before it happened, I was very quite nervous, didn't really know what to expect. Can I still do it? But there was a certain part that as soon as I stepped onto that, into that field, um, with all the old faces and the new faces, and you know, Tim shouting and telling me what to do, um, it just clicked. And it was like I'd never been away. Um, you know, the same sound guy came and put probably the same microphone on me that from 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and it, it felt like nothing had changed. So I was actually quite nervous watching it, uh, or waiting to watch it, as it were, um, because uh, it was just, 
it's been a long time that they've been any time teams and it's even longer since I've been involved in it and it was just funny sort of watching to see how it came out but I loved it I just thought it was brilliant it was a big complex site it has been emotional like seeing the very first episode and I didn't expect it to jump in with the music and the the opening sequence with the map and everything just as soon as that music starts you just go straight back don't you right back to uh, to the old time team it was such a such it was so good that it, that hadn't changed the intro hadn't really changed it, the old feeling was just there straight away and i was sat there watching it not as me that's been on a program mm. just genuinely like if you were going oh wow oh this is great and what i've loved about it it's so familiar it's so comforting yes we've got lots of new technologies and bits and bobs but the show itself is just it's just been overwhelmingly good the past three episodes. The most common interpretation for the Fugu of, of the options given were that they were deliberately built for puzzling archaeologists. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, 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 yeah. that's, yeah. that's always been the magic of Time Team, hasn't it? It's, mm. it's been that getting getting people involved in the puzzle, in, in, in experiencing the, the, the process that we go through. It was just fantastic fun to work with the likes of, dare I say, Tim, uh, especially Emily, the old crowd, the very old crowd like Stuart, and with new people, new exciting ideas, dare I say yourselves, with new technology, um, didn't always work, but it was far better than the people trying to operate the equipment. No, it was just good fun. And the archaeology was fantastic. It was almost as good as the geophysics. I, when I did my A-level archaeology, one of the first things I remember learning about was a fugu. And so for it to come back round all many, exactly. many, many, many years later mm. for us to do this, um, yeah, it was it was really cool. And you guys interviewed me in a fugu. I mean, that, I can't ever say that's going to happen again. <laughs> I, I, I've got a really vivid memory, which, which made it onto the uh, second episode where I was laser scanning the fugu. And um, I hadn't really had a moment to chat to John yet. And I, I'd never really crossed John's path before and all, all I knew of John was the uh, very uh, blunt speaking geophysicist that you saw on Time Team, <laughs> and um, I sort of got got the um, uh, got the the three D data through from the laser scanner, and John's going, oh, "There's there's a ditch running off this way." I don't think the laser scanner shows that ditch. <laughs> so going up to John and going, "John, I don't I don't think." That's what the laser scanner is showing. And then before I knew it, there's a camera in our face. And I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I, I thought this, this is Time Team Legend next to me. I don't I just, I, I know what my data is showing me. Um, so, yeah, certainly some moments of stage fright for me <laughs> as we were there. Let's get down and dirty and talk about excavation. Yeah, the, the, real, the real kind of uh, nubbin of, uh, of archaeology, really. When, it, when, when you've done the geophysics and you've done your research and you've done everything, what's the final thing, as Karenza said? In the episode, you've got to dig it. You've got a half you section. Dig it. It. Well, mm -hmm. A wise person once said to me, "Don't speculate, excavate." Um, I've just been having a look at the questions um, we've got, and we, there's been lots and lots of upvoting going on. So thank you to everyone for doing that. Naomi, you win the prize tonight for having the most popular upvoted question in the Q and A. Oh, oh! There's a question in the chat from Mark that's been upvoted. How, how does it feel being back on Time Team again now that it's finally happened? What? How, how did it feel to step on site? Oh, that's going to sound so corny. It's like a step back in time. It really was. And I think it's a really good question because obviously Emily highlighted how much you can only cram into an episode. But Mark wants to know how did you know that the the round has collapsed? It collapsed into itself. It's a kind of a mixture, really. So um, you've, you've got to take to answer that question. You kind of think, well, what would I expect? What have I seen before? What can I see in the ground? And uh, you know, how does it fit in between all those things? So not telling anybody. Oh, only Emily, knows. Only Emily knows. She only knows the secrets. <laughs> Oh, well, gosh, um, what am I looking forward to? I, don't, I can't imagine what Emily has done with it, because yet again, we, we, as Stuart said, uh, you, you, you only know the bits you're doing, and it's a vast site, and trying to get a story to make a proper narrative, that's a really difficult thing. And, and I'm just gobsmacked by how Emily managed it with, with mm. Baden, and I can't imagine how she'll do it with Broughton either. <laughs> Broughton was just a, a, a totally different site, wasn't it? It was um it was uh it was on a different scale, it was um it was different sort of countryside, it was um 
I think it's a very different show and uh, and everyone's really settled in. Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait. It's going to be great. I would love to see us explore sites that, in a way, we don't know very much about. I, I like sites where you're almost the first people to, to have a go at it. A, the, the, in many ways, the more you know about sites before you get there, they, the, the more difficult they can be to, you know, to unravel. And I, If we're making more, more Time Team series next year, 2023, that will be 30 years since the first Time Team was ever made. Now, the amount that archaeology has come on since then, we actually know a lot more, you know, so not only can we access information a lot better with new technology like mobile phones, not only is our equipment for gathering our data a lot better, but actually we've got a lot more information against which we can develop our ideas. Um, so it's a really exciting time to be bringing Time Team back because of that. But it's just so good to be able to, on your phone, just to be able to sort of research, download a report, read it, grab a screenshots, a couple of images, and then compare them. You know, it's just brilliant. Like, Can I just say, when I was on site with Carenza, I thought that she was telling us about things she knew. I didn't realise she'd Googled <laughs> them on site. <laughs> How low are we getting? Oh. I mean, the interaction has been fantastic. Uh, it's seeing all those people from countries all over the place engaging with the archaeology and the fun of it. Um, it really is a fun thing, if a little chaotic to do, but it's in a way, this is the start of a whole load of potential stuff. If we continue to get the backing from the Patreon people, there are sites coming in now, which I am terribly excited about. And I'm just thinking, oh, it'd be brilliant if we could do these. Um, and I think with the support we're getting and the feedback we're getting, it makes it a really interesting process because I think this is kind of new. Um, I'm not sure this has been done before, that an archaeology programme has gone out free to view on YouTube. We've had chats like this. We've had a chance to see Emily editing. We've shared with the Patreon guys which sites. And you've, they've all come together with us and shared the journey with things like DigWatch. And that is really rather lovely because it's kind of reassuring. And I remember having discussions a long time ago with Mick Mick was very keen on community archaeology and he would go all over the country and do lectures in cold, drafty village halls to communicate it. And one of the things when I first talked with Mick about Time Team was the idea that Time Team was a way to get out the message about archaeology to as many people as possible and make it a community thing. And that's ex exactly what we're doing now. I used to ask Mick what was the key thing about archaeology, and he often said it was a way of looking at the world. But there is something growing here, and I think the more people that begin to back us, the more sites we can do. I think Mick would have loved the more sort of democratic, more connected way that we can do Time Team now by being so much better connected directly with people who can feed back to us in, more in real time and we can get, get it out there to more people and be more responsive. It would be great to do some sites that are coming from members of the public. Also, what's been nice to me, Derek, is, is seeing, you know, some new faces coming in as well. I mean, you know, some of the people coming in uh, are, you know... I, I, I hesitate to call them the next generation, but they're certainly a lot younger than I am. And uh, that's that's great. That's incredible to have let them have the space. And they've all got their own ideas. But the thing that I love about it is they care more about the archaeology than they do the television. Time Team is a kind of club of people who kind of like each other and love what they're doing. And for me to be involved in that is just kind of a joy. So thank you very much. And, of course... Thank you to the Patreon people without whose backing we couldn't do any of this. So thank you to them in particular. Amazing. Thank you so much, Tim. Everyone, be sure to tune in in the next Big Dome um, sort of live event, which will be after uh, the uh, Broughton excavation, which will be coming out in three weeks. Again, three episodes for one excavation, an hour and a half in total. Amazing. A toast Cheers, to the Patreons. Cheers.
We're using cutting edge technology to delve deep into a huge Roman villa and uncover secrets inside the walls of an amazing Tudor castle. Join us for the episode premieres on the Time Team official YouTube channel with exclusive previews, after show live events and extra insights on Patreon.